day, I'm a volunteer for Save the River. Save the River is an organization that was established to preserve, protect, and restore the St. Lawrence River through advocacy, education, and research. We've just arrived on Rock Island, a New York State Park along the St. Lawrence River. On the island is a lighthouse. A lighthouse is a tower that emits light to help the watercraft and ships travel the narrow parts of the river safely. The lighthouse is like a traffic sign along the river. Let's start our exciting journey on Rock Island. Hi, my name is Heather. I am a volunteer with Save the River. We are going to take a walk along the shoreline and see a close-up of the unique attributes of this habitat and why so many aquatic birds visit Rock Island. Rock Island is a visitor's habitat for these birds. A bird is warm-blooded, it has feathers, and it can fly. Birds also lay eggs. Today we're going to talk about aquatic birds, and they're extra special. They have webbed feet to help them swim. Just like the fins that you use for swimming, it provides a bigger surface so they can swim faster. They also have a special gland that secretes oil. This oil protects the bird and keeps them dry, and it also helps them preen, which means to clean. In the cold weather, it also keeps them warmer. Today, we are going to focus on a few of the aquatic birds that visit Rock Island. The loon, the great blue heron, the merganser, the osprey, and the tern. I made a collection here of bird feathers that I found during today's walk. When you visit a place like Rock Island, if you take a slow, careful look at the habitat area, you can often find evidence of birds that have visited. Look at this, it looks like four different kinds of birds just by looking at the different colors and textures of those feathers. So there's one collection of evidence I found. And if you follow me along here, I found what looks like the remains of someone's lunch. Look really closely. You can see the remains of crayfish. Oh, that's one of the foods of the great blue heron. So that might have been a lunch site. If we look along the surface of the smooth rock, you can see why especially early in the season, birds would come here to warm themselves. This large surface retains heat and makes a very comfortable resting place for aquatic birds to visit. This is a perfect island for a wading bird like the great blue heron. Their long, thin legs allow them to walk along the shoreline while keeping the rest of their body quite dry. Diving birds also enjoy visiting this habitat, such as the loon and the merganser, who will often visit here with their young to practice diving and searching for fish along the shallow, warm waters right at the edge of the island. Shorelines are among the most productive habitats on Earth. They are the transition zone between aquatic and terrestrial ecosystems. They provide habitat for so many species with the high plant production, food source, also improving water quality and the paths for plants and animals. Rock Island is the perfect habitat for aquatic birds to visit. Let's learn about the common tern. 
common terns are a small, pale gray bird with a black cap, orange beak with a black tip, and orange feet. They have deeply forked tails. Common terns nest along the St. Lawrence River, along navigation cells, and treeless islands, which are called shoals. They raise their young along rocky outcrops of shoals that look exactly like this. Common terns nest between May and August, raise their young along the St. Lawrence River, and then fly to Central and South America where they migrate and overwinter. Save the River has been monitoring common terns with the help of volunteers for many years. Common terns are a New York State threatened species, which means one day, if we don't help them, they could become endangered. Common terns are threatened because of loss of habitat for nesting sites, predators like great blue heron that will prey on common terns, their adults and young, and eggs, and because of extreme weather conditions, extreme hot, cold, and a lot of rain. What Save the River does to help common terns is we will get nesting sites ready for them, we will put up exclosures to keep predators out. We will put gravel on the shoals because common terns make a tiny scrape in the gravel to lay their eggs. And we will put out chick shelters to keep uh, chicks safe and warm and dry when extreme weather happens. Just like you need a house to protect you, common turn chicks need a chick shelter to protect them when they're young and vulnerable. Save the River also works with researchers uh, to band the legs of common turns with bird bands. It's a tiny bracelet that goes around the left uh, leg of the turn. It doesn't hurt them and it has a unique number to identify the identity of that common turn. When we ban common terns, this gives researchers information on where that chick was hatched and where it migrates to, so that we can keep uh, good records on how our populations of common terns are doing. Things that you can do to keep common terns safe would be to observe them from a distance and not chase uh, shorebirds. Shorebirds are really important because they're a food source, again, for great blue heron. Uh, their eggs and their chicks are predated by great blue heron. And they are an important indicator of water quality. By looking at common terns eggs, we can see if there's pollution in the river and that'll keep us healthy too. Hey everybody, I'm Kim from the Minute Anthony Common Nature Center. And today we're gonna talk about an amazing bird. Here it is, anybody know what it is? Listen to the sound. Think a minute. That's right, it is a common loon. Common loons are a really cool bird. It's one of my favorite aquatic birds. You know what aquatic means? It means a bird that lives in the water. These aquatic birds migrate all the way down from the Gulf in all way up to where we are on the St. Lawrence River. Common loons are diving birds. They need large bodies of water just like you see here. They can dive up to 200 feet down in the water. Does anybody know how that's possible? I certainly can't dive 200 feet. That's because their bodies are built for diving. First thing I'm going to show you in this little box is a bird bone. Now this bird bone is something you would find in a songbird, something very small. If you look here, the bone is hollow. In a common loon, the bone is actually solid. Why do you think the bone is solid? That's right, to make the bird heavier to dive to grab for their food, which is fish. Common loons 
also have a special kind of foot. Now this is not a loon foot, but this is a aquatic bird foot. And you can see in between each of the toe, there is a webbing. Why would they have webbing in between their toes? Right, that's correct. It's so then they can use it like a flipper, just like a diver would to put on a flipper on their feet to help move the water. Now a neat thing about loons is where their legs are positioned. Now I've got a loon here. Most birds have their feet and legs right in the center of their bodies. It makes it easier for them to stand. But loons actually have their feet actually in the back end of them. So they actually have their legs there so it's easier to swim and dive. But this can be a problem for the common loon because that makes them solely a water bird. You would never find them walking on land because what happens is, is their weight is on the front end. So when they're on the ground, they actually have their butts in the air and their stomach towards the ground. It's hard for them to take flight. So they actually stay in the water their whole lives, except for one time. And that's when they're nesting. They come along the shorelines, just like you would see on our rock island. The only exception is, is the shoreline where they nest would be heavier set with cattails and reeds. So it makes it easier to build a soft nest and camouflage themselves. Do you know what camouflage means? That's right, to be able to hide themselves, to protect themselves from predators. Now the last thing I want to show you is pretty cool. And you can try this at home. I just took an old sack and I cut off the cuff. I'm going to pretend this is a loon's neck. Now you can take a stuffed animal. I happen to have a stuffed fish. This is supposed to look like a crappie. Now a loon, since I said it was a diving bird, they uh, dive for fish. So when they swallow, their neck actually expands. So the cuff is showing how a loon's neck would expand, and that's how they swallow without choking. So you can try that as well. I hope you had fun learning about the loon. You can see them all along the St. Lawrence River in spring and summer, and even a little bit of the fall. Happy exploring. I wanted to share a little bit about my favorite aquatic bird that also happens to be the symbol of Save the River, the great blue heron. It's easy to see why this bird might have been chosen as the symbol as it walks along the shoreline as if keeping watch over the beautiful St. Lawrence River. This carnivore will often visit Rock Island to do fishing. It will walk along the shore, appearing to be looking out, when actually this eye can look straight down into the clear water in search of small snakes, frogs, aquatic insects, and its favorite food, fish. When it finds a fish, the specially adapted neck is made with small, pliable vertebrae, allowing the parent to use its bill to strike in an instant and rise up with a fish in its mouth for lunch. These carnivores will walk along the shoreline and enjoy their lunch here on Rock Island. This bird can stand four feet tall with a six foot wingspan. The wingspan is from tip to tip of the wing. That would be fun for you to measure in your classroom. This bird can build nests that are three feet wide. And these nests can be seen way atop a tree. The nest is wide, it is flat. The mother and father heron work together to build the nest. 
They also work together for the 28 days that it takes to incubate the eggs before the chick hatches. The heron will oftentimes come together in a group called a colony when they are nesting. That's really the only time you see them together. If you see them along a shoreline fishing, they are solitary animals for that. You can learn so much more about the heron on Save the River's website at www.savetheriver.org. I built a model of the great blue heron nest so that you could get a feeling of the size of this nest. You would not usually see one up close because the heron like to nest way atop tall, tall trees. It is a time when you will see heron coming together. You can usually see five or six trees all with heron nests atop and a group of nests is oftentimes called a colony. Interestingly enough, the male chooses the nesting site. The female does the building. Then both heron will take turns incubating or keeping warm their eggs. Eggs are usually two to six to a nest. They're this color green and they're just a little bit larger than a chicken egg. They incubate for about 28 days, hatching in the order in which they were laid. So the first egg laid is the first egg to hatch. And out will come the heron chick. And you can see the heron chick already has the front chest, long plumage beginning. The great blue heron nest along the St. Lawrence River Seaway. And although you won't see them nest on Rock Island, you do see the grown-ups oftentimes coming to fish along the rocky shores. Look out there, a female merganser and her young visiting the shoreline. This is the perfect place for that mother to teach her young how to dive for fish and crayfish, some of their favorite foods. Did you know that they can stay underwater for almost two minutes? That is a long time to hold your breath. Using their specially adapted thin serrated bill, they are experts at fishing. Once they catch their fish, they return to the surface and eat their prey whole, oftentimes head first. Walking the shorelines here at Rock Island, evidence of a good merganser lunch can often be seen down amongst the pebbles. We can see pieces of crayfish left behind after a good meal. The merganser is such a special visitor of the shoreline of Rock Island. As we approach this navigational permanent buoy, you will see an osprey nest. Ospreys are diurnal fish-eating birds of prey. They are large raptors. They dive into the water to catch their fish. The osprey has barred pads on the bottom of their feet to help them grip the slippery fish so they can bring them home to their young. It's been a great day at Rock Island, visiting along the shoreline of the great St. Lawrence River. I hope that you learned a little bit about some of the aquatic birds that visit here daily. To learn more, visit Save the River on the web. View the many teacher resources on our webpage for additional classroom activities or to schedule a field trip either out here to Rock Island State Park or one of the many other locations that Save the River visits, allowing children to have hands-on, authentic experiences along the great St. Lawrence River.